What's up guys, it's Dollmatter here, and today we are going to be reacting to Why Does Russia Own Kaliningrad Slash Konigsberg? So for anyone not familiar, Kaliningrad is, oh we got the map right here. This area on the map right here, this little chunk, used to be part of Prussia historically. And then obviously Prussia formed Germany through, you know, many wars. Uh, it had been part of Germany from like the 1400s I want to say, maybe even earlier than that. Up until... World War Two, right? Been part of the German sphere, I should say, because technically it wasn't part of Germany, it was part of Prussia, which became Germany, but you know what I mean. Anyway, so why is it part of Russia nowadays? Uh, I imagine it has something to do with World War Two, judging by the fact that, you know, this, I think the Soviet Union took it out after World War Two. but, uh, yeah, link to the original video down below. This is from, uh, what is it? History Matters is the name of this channel. It's from History Matters, link to the original video down below. I'm going to like, comment, subscribe to help the algorithm, and let's get into it. At a modern map of Europe, you'll see a curious exclave along the Baltic Sea. This is Kaliningrad and has been a part of the Russian Federation since 1991. The more observant of you will have noticed that it isn't attached to Russia, which raises the question, why does Russia own Kaliningrad and how did it come to possess it? Well, first of all, the region, centered on a city of the same name, hasn't been known as Kaliningrad for very long, but prior to this was known as Königsberg. From the 13th century, it was a part of the... Okay, so yeah, it was the uh, 13th century, so 1400, so I was right about that. And then, yeah, this is Prussia lands of the Teutonic Order. Oh, and by this the Teutons and then Prussia. 16th century, Königsberg was the central part of the newly formed Duchy of Prussia, a puppet yeah. state of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. It wasn't long before... I actually didn't know that. I didn't know that uh, Prussia was owned by uh, the, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Before Prussia broke free and Königsberg was the site which saw the first king of Prussia crowned. Within a few centuries it had grown to this and by the late 19th century it was the dominant force within the newly formed German Empire. As you'll be able to guess, Königsberg, whilst not the capital, held a special place within the German Empire as one of its cultural centres and the birthplace of its ruling dynasty. The yeah, so I mean the, the Prussians were the ones that pushed across Germany to kind of unify Germany. Um, and to some extent you could say World War II was a kind of extension of that. And I, I know at some point the Allies wanted to get rid of Prussia from Germany because they thought, you know, this idea of, like, Prussian militarism, <clears throat> if they could get it out of Germany, would, like, neuter Germany. Um, don't know how well that worked, right, especially considering they didn't have it for the start of World War II or didn't have the majority of it for the start of World War II, but... Anyway, let's continue. The point I'm trying to get at is, for about six centuries prior to this point, Königsberg and its surrounding area was primarily German. Although you should note that there were sizable Polish and Lithuanian minorities there too. The status of this land didn't really change until the Second World War. Although you should be aware that the 1919 Treaty of Versailles after the First World War saw Germany lose this territory in its ruling Prussia. Yeah, so they lost a bunch of, like, a, a decent chunk of Prussia there. Dynasty. As you'll notice, it did keep Königsberg itself, but this time as its own exclave known as Eastern Prussia. You'll also notice that it did lose this land to the newly formed Lithuania, which, throughout the period of the Weimar Republic, was a hotbed of support for the growing National Socialist movement, which soon saw a certain Adolf Hitler running the show. Who got this land? Yeah, and that, that's like that was one of the big issues, obviously, leading up to World War II, right? You take a bunch of this territory away from a nation, you're obviously going to have a nationalist uprising, right? People want to reclaim the glory of the past. And when they go from, you know, uh, uh, this G the Germany of World War One, especially, you know, at the end of World War One, prior, like, at the end, but prior to an ending, so, like, nearing the end, you know, when they'd kicked the Russians out, right, they'd been basically kicked the show to the Russians, and they'd grabbed all this territory on the Eastern Front, uh, and then they, you know, they, they end up surrendering, and then they lose everything plus what they had, you know, had for 100 plus years. Well, I guess not really 100 plus years at that point, just a couple decades, but you can see why it would infuriate them and back from Lithuania, and also Q World War II, which Germany lost. In 1945, Soviet forces advanced on Königsberg, and this led to many of the people living there fleeing west deeper into Germany. After a destructive siege, the city fell to the Soviets, and after Germany's surrender, its borders were once again redrawn by the victorious powers. This time, Germany was to lose Königsberg and the area around it to Stalin's USSR and its new Eastern European puppet states. The region of East Prussia was thus divided into three parts. The southern part went to Poland and the northern part went to the USSR but as a part of the Lithuanian Soviet Republic. And as for the centre, which included the city of Königsberg itself, this went to the USSR's Russian Soviet Republic. So why was... Okay, so that, I mean it's kind of weird that they gave it to themselves, right? You feel like you'd give it to Lithuania or maybe, uh, you know, Poland or somebody, right? Just because of its location. Um, you know, obviously the Soviet Union at that time, well, Poland technically wasn't part of the Soviet Union, it was just in its sphere of influence, but Soviet Union at that time was one country, but it just seems kind of weird to have a exclave of a 
terror like of a nation within the Soviet Union, right? Just seems kind of weird. Wasn't it given to Lithuania despite being next door? Well, at this point, Lithuania had only recently been incorporated into the USSR, mostly against the will of those who lived there. Ah, okay. And thus, Stalin didn't trust them with an area of such military importance. Furthermore, the region was subject to widespread ethnic cleansing, which saw most of its remaining Germans deported to East Germany and replaced mostly with Russians. That Something the Soviet Union is very uh, fond of. Which is kind of funny, because, like, obviously when you think of ethnic cleansing and, uh, you know, genocides and stuff, you generally think of, you know the Nazis and the fascists, uh, who people oftentimes mistake for one another because they fought on the same side of the war. But, you know, the, the big problem with that is, one, Nazis and fascists aren't the same thing, right? That's like saying that, you know, the Soviet Union, America, and Imperial Britain are the same thing because they all fought on the same side of the war, right? These are very different ideologies. Everyone knows that. The same is true for Nazism and fascism, right? There is some overlap. Um, you know, just like there was some overlap between the British and the Americans, but uh, you know, the, the systems were very different. Um, but yeah, all, on top of that, you know, the communists committed a lot of atrocities. Uh, you, they, you know, they had many, many genocides within their nations, right? Even you know, recently in, with China. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's not surprising at all that they ethnically cleansed it. I mean, that's pretty par for the course in you know, heavily statist countries. That said, when Stalin died, his successor, Nikita Khrushchev, did offer Kaliningrad to Lithuania, who said no. Why? <laughs> because the people there weren't Lithuanian, and its leaders felt that incorporating so many Russians into its territory would cause long-term issues. Thus, True, because you imagine if they had, like, they already have a problem with Russians in a lot of those um, Baltic states now, right? Because you imagine if they had that many more. The, the, the leader of Lithuania at that point was thinking, like, real long-term. He's like, eventually we're going to break off. And we don't want tons of Russians in our territory because it's going to make it more difficult to break off. And if we do, it's going to make it much easier for the Russians to have a uh, fifth pillar within the country, kind of like they had within Ukraine, right? You had these different regions. Uh, I have to move my thing. We had these different regions down here, which were, you know, majority ethnic Russian or large part ethnic Russian. And that was a kind of, uh, you know, a easy way for the Russians to basically declare war, right? You know, the we need to defend our people type thing. So, I mean, Lithuania was smart about that. Thus, Kaliningrad would remain a part of the Russian Soviet Republic throughout the lifespan of the USSR until its collapse in 1991. I broke it. This marked a point in which the status of the area could have changed. Lithuania still wasn't interested in Kaliningrad for the same reasons as before, and this yep. view was shared by Poland. That left Germany, which had a long-standing historical claim to the area. So why didn't they get it? First of all, it was because the Russian Federation inherited the lands of the Russian Soviet Republic, and also because Germany didn't want it. During the process of... Re That's actually surprising. I'm surprised Germany didn't want it just because of how important it is to them historically and culturally. I wonder if that has something to do with the Russian population. But I feel like it would be easier for a nation the size of Germany to assimilate those people. Um, because obviously you wouldn't be able to remove them today. It would be seen as like a fucking massive like international incident and like a you know this crisis type thing uh which would just not fly today right especially in like a western nation doing it um but you could easily assimilate them with you know over time with the massive population germany has compared to kaliningrad but so i'm surprised they didn't with how historically important i wonder if he'll, he'll mention why reunification, the West German Chancellor Helmut Kohl didn't push to regain the exclave. His first priority was the reunification of East and West, and he felt that trying to force the issue of Kaliningrad would upset the global powers he was trying to negotiate with. Brit oh, fair enough, fair enough. I guess that makes sense, you know, get what concessions you can at the time, we'll go for Kaliningrad later, boys. Britain and France were already wary of a reunified Germany, and to give it extra land was, to them, a cause for yet more concern. And so... Yeah, funnily enough, like, uh, Thatcher, if we go back here, Thatcher was against the reunification of Germany. A lot of people in Europe were at the time. Um, they were worried it would give G Germany too much power and they'd become the, uh, too economically dominant of Europe. And, you know, it's a good thing that never happened. <laughs> Although, to be fair, Germany made a lot of mistakes with their economic dominance, so now they're kind of, you know, in a really rough situation with Russia because of the oil and gas, but the, the Germans, they'll recover from it. And so Germany never tried to reclaim Königsberg, which was barely even German anymore. And for Russia, Kaliningrad was just as Russian as any other bit of it, and so why would they even contemplate letting it It belongs go? to Russia. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and thank you for watching with extra... Yeah, so, I, I love the little signs he has all the time. Um, this one, what, uh, there wasn't as much humor in this one as there was the last one that I watched, but uh, the little signs are still funny. But, 
yeah, great great video. Honestly, there's a lot of stuff I didn't know there that I learned, so that's uh, definitely really interesting. Um, you know, I, I think it had it been, you know, even 50 years ago, let alone 100 or 200 years ago, the Germans definitely would have been more than willing to take it, and they probably would have either killed those people or excommunicated, not I guess excommunicated isn't the right word, Um, you know, expelled them from it to, you know, reclaim it as Ger German territory. Uh you know, maybe they'll end up getting it in this new Russian-Ukrainian war, depending on what ends up happening there. But uh, who knows? Anyway, uh, let me know what you think below. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.